God. Uh, we are able to talk to God. He speaks verbally to us in his word and non-verbally through his obvious providence, meaning his invisible hand uh, that works throughout history. We commune with him through prayer. Um, Charles Hodge declared that prayer is the converse of the soul with God. It's, it's a conversation of your soul with God. In and through prayer, in and through prayer, we express our reverence and adoration for God. We bear our souls in contrite confession before Him. We pour out, we pour out the thanksgiving of grateful hearts, and we offer our petitions and supplications to Him. In prayer, we experience God as personal and powerful. He can hear us and act in response. The scripture teaches both the sovereign foreordination of God and the efficacy of prayer, meaning that, uh, yes, you foreordains all things, meaning he knows all things, he has ordained them to be, uh, he's sovereign like that. But at the same time, we see the effectiveness of prayer. So the Bible teaches both those realities, that yes, God is sovereign, knows all things, uh, he has foreordained all things. And yet we have this privilege of being able to pray and that prayer being effective, meaning that God answers prayer. Wow. All right. Um, he'll, he'll, he'll reconcile the two, two realities just now. So the two are not inconsistent with one another. For God ordains the means as well as the ends for which or for his divine purposes. Uh, prayer is a means God uses to bring his sovereign will to pass. So God uses our prayers to fulfill his purposes. So some of the things we pray for are inconsistency or are, are consistent with the purposes of God, the will of God, the ordained will of God. And therefore, part of the process of him bringing about um, his purposes is seen through answered prayers and those answered prayers are the means are of course prayer wow okay prayer is to be uh, okay no prayer is a means god uses to bring his sovereign will to pass prayer is to be addressed to god alone either to god as triune or to the distinct persons of the godhead meaning the father the son the holy spirit to pray to creatures is idolatry uh, to pray to created beings, whether human beings, whether animals, whether trees, whether anything else, uh, whether inanimate, for instance, anything created, any creaturely being, uh, inanimate or animate, is called idolatry. It's basically taking that privilege that is meant to be directed to God and directing it to creatures, whether animate or inanimate, meaning whether living or dead. All right. Um, okay. Proper prayer has several requisites, meaning prerequisites, okay, or requirements. The first is that we approach God with sincerity. Uh, I think that's a profound statement. Be sincere. Be yourself. <laughs> be yourself. I mean, you can't outsmart God with pretensions. So as you come before Him, just be yourself. Be sincere. Right. Uh, Empty and insincere phrases are a mockery to him. You know, yeah, I, I won't. I won't elaborate further than that. Empty and uh, insincere phrases mock God. All right, such prayer, far from being an exercise of godly religion, is an offense against God. Number two, uh, the second requisite is that uh, we approach God with reverence, meaning. Uh, with, with, with respect, uh, honoring and understanding that we are speaking to the sovereign creator of the universe. We are speaking to the creator of all things, the be all, uh, um, the Alpha and Omega, the, the reason for our existence. So we, we have to come with, with that reverence. The Holy One, uh, he's not like us. 
So we, we come with that reverence, uh, awe, wonder. All right. Um, in prayer, we must always remember to whom we are speaking, yes. To address God in a cavalier, casual, or flimp- flippant manner as we speak with our earthly friends is to treat him with the contempt of familiarity. Uh, yes, God is our dad, uh, but as much as he's our dad, I mean, we have a sense of respect. Uh, as well as we approach him Uh, as you would with with your earthly parents you know like the relationship is good the relationship is healthy but there's some reverence there all right um so flippancy is is a no right uh what else okay to adjust god in okay I, i read that point um as people pay homage to a king by entering his presence with a posture of respect and uh, obedience so we come before god in full recognition of his supreme majesty yes the the reason for the reverence is not because he'll smite you no it's in view of the fact that uh god is majestic it's in view of the fact that look if Ramaphosa walked into your living room or you had to walk into his office there would be a sense of uh, respect, a sense of I'm speaking to someone of uh, a higher authority I'm speaking to someone who is likely to be inaccessible how much more that God, the creator of the universe we have that privilege of entering into uh, his throne room uh, daily hourly, you have that privilege, so as you do that, remember that he is God, he is majestic. It's it's a beautiful privilege and we, we let us not be flippant about it. Okay, I've all over elaborated on that. The third prerequisite of prayer is this, that um, which follows the previous ones, is that we approach God in humility, we humble ourselves. Uh, we are not prideful, we are not boastful, we just humble ourselves. Uh, because we are in need as well, you know. So not only must we remember who he is, but we must also remember who and what we are. Uh, We are his adopted children. Uh, We are also sinful creatures. He invites us to come boldly before him, but never arrogantly. We come to the throne boldly. We come with confidence, but not at all with arrogance. not at all with pridefulness, not at all with conceit, humble ourselves. Ah. We'll answer you just after now, my lady. We'll answer you. I'm almost done. I'm just reading. Um, So, God instructs us to be earnest and fervent in our requests. At the same time, we come in willful submission. To say your will be done is not an indication of a lack of faith. Uh, To say, Lord, your will be done is not an indication of lack of faith. The faith we we bring to prayer must include a trust that God is able to hear our prayers and that he is disposed to answer them. Yet when God says no to our requests, this faith is also trusting God in his wisdom, trusting that God knows best. God's wisdom and benevolence, meaning he always wishes well for for his children, must always and everywhere be assumed by those who entreat him with petitions. So always in prayer, you have to assume that God is exercising his wisdom and God is exercising his benevolence, meaning he's he's wishing well, he's, he's, he's working out something for your good. It's, it's, and, and something for your good may be a no for your good. Uh, it may be a no for your good. Yeah, yeah. All right, and then, uh, okay. Um, the faith we bring to prayer must include a trust that God is able to hear our prayers and that he's disposed to answer them. Yes, okay, I made that point. Um so let's let's finish it off with with the last paragraph 
We pray in the name of Jesus. <laughs> we pray in the name of Jesus because we do thereby acknowledge his office as a mediator. Uh, we pray in the name of Jesus because we acknowledge his office as the go-between, the mediator, the one who brings us near, the one who has brought us near to the throne of grace, uh, the one who has enabled us to pray with confidence. Uh, so we pray in the name of Jesus, acknowledging his mediatorial work, uh, the work of his blood that brought us near, uh, the work that uh, says that we are clothed with the righteousness of Christ. And therefore, when we come before the throne, we don't come on the basis of our own righteousness. We come on the basis of the righteousness of Christ. We are confident that God answers prayers, not because of who we are, but because of who we are in Christ Jesus. That's, that's a beautiful point there. So, as our high priest, that's Jesus, as our high priest, uh, Christ is our intercessor, even as the Holy Spirit is our helper in prayer. Wow, the Trinity is involved in prayer, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Father is here he is hearing our uh, petitions the father is listening to our prayers the father is answering our prayers the holy spirit is helping us in our prayers uh, sometimes we don't even know what to pray for us for but already he interprets the mind the heart of our prayers to to the father and not only that Jesus Christ is interceding for us he's also praying for us even when we can't pray for ourselves Sure. So a helpful tool in learning to pray is the acrostic acts. That's a tool to learn to pray. Each letter in the acrostic indicates a vital element of prayer. Remember, the disciples also asked Jesus, teach us how to pray. Uh, so here's a helpful tool. Uh, it's acts, the acronym acts. A stands for adoration. You adore God. You show ador uh, adoration to God. Uh, you tell him how much you love him. Uh, just adore him. And it must be a sincere thing. Number two uh, in the acronym of Acts is called confession. You confess your sins. Acknowledge your fallenness. You acknowledge your weak, weak weaknesses. You acknowledge your faults. You acknowledge your inconsistencies. You acknowledge all the, the bad stuff <laughs> that you've done. I don't know. That you are aware of. You, you just lay yourself bare. You, 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 you confess. Number three, you thank God. Thanksgiving act, acts. You you thank God, and uh, number four, you you make your supplications, meaning you ask, you ask for yourself and you ask for others. Uh, so yeah, by following the simple ac acrostic, we are sure to include all the proper elements of prayer. That's prayer. That's prayer. Sure, yeah, that was quick. Um, let me read the summary and then answer. I think someone had a question unrelated to what we're doing, so I'll just answer that just now. So here's the summary from today's reading. Uh, thank you for the gift. It's tabi. Number one, prayer is communion with God. It's spending time with God. Uh, number two, prayer is to be addressed to God alone. Uh, any other recipient of prayer is an idol. Number three, prayer must be sincere, relevant, and humble. Must be sincere, reverent, not relevant. <laughs> reverent, yes, and humble. Sincere, uh, don't pretend to be something that you are not before God. With the boast words and uh, all these acts of pretending to be holier than thou, God, God knows you, so you, you can't, literally you can't pretend. So just be yourself. Uh, but in being yourself, be reverent. Uh, in view of his majesty, in, in view of who he is, uh, be reverent. And um, be humble. Uh, don't be arrogant. Don't be prideful. Just humble yourself. Yeah, and then number four, uh, we are commanded to be fervent and persistent in prayer. We must be consistent in our prayer lives. We must be consistent in communing with God, spending time with God your soul interacting with God. Number five, uh, pr the prayer of faith is a prayer trusting in God's wisdom and kindness. So uh, when he says no, 
uh, it's not because he's unkind. Uh, we, we know that God is benevolent. We, we also know that God is wise. So wise. So you have to trust uh, that as well. And remember that he's executing his purposes through your prayers as well. So it's God's means of uh, fulfilling his foreordained uh, purposes for this world. So you must also hold that in mind that God is using uh, your prayers for his purposes. So, yeah, uh, and not not to uh, put you down or not to demean you or not to destroy you. It, it's for your good. Some of his purposes in your life are f actually all of his purposes for your life are for his glory and your good. Lastly then, the acrostic acts is an aid to prayer. Remember acts, uh, the acrostic says, A is for adoration, you adore God. That's an act of worship as well. Uh, number C, the C is confess your sins, confess your, your, your shortcomings. Number T, the T point is thanksgiving. Give thanks for God for the answered prayers in your life and in the lives of other people. Uh, thank God for the things you have, uh, the privileges you have, the food you have, the ability to wake up in the morning, the life you have, you, you thank God. And then uh, lastly, S is supplication. Then you ask God, not only for yourself, to supply your needs, but to supply the needs of others, and including the country and the leaders there, therein. Um, as we know, uh, because we are reading a book that is titled The Essential Truths of the Christian Faith, it, would, it wouldn't be uh, relevant or it wouldn't be uh, genuine of me to just read the author's comments without referring to any scripture and what informs uh, today's reading. So in terms of scripture, uh, the first biblical reference that the author gives us is Psalm chapter 5, uh, Psalm chapter 5, verse 1 to 3, uh, Psalm chapter 5, verse 1 to 3. Uh, we are done reading. I, as I said, we'll be done by 10 past or 5 past uh, our 7 o'clock. We are done. I just want to read uh, what informed today's reading. Uh, yeah. I'm just going to Psalm chapter 5, verse 1 to 5. Psalm chapter 5, verse 1 to 5. 1 to 3, sorry. So uh, it reads as follows. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my groaning. Give attention to the sound of my cry, my King and my God. For to you do I pray. O Lord, in the morning you hear my voice. In the morning I, prefer as I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. The second biblical reference is John chapter 14, verse 13 to 14. John chapter 14, verse 13 to 14. John chapter 14, verse 13 to 14. It reads as follows. Um, Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Hey, <laughs> Wow, what a bold point. Uh, third reference is Romans chapter 8 verse 26 to 27 Romans chapter 8 verse 26 to 27 it reads as follows um, likewise the spirit helps us in our weakness for we do not know what to pray for as we ought but the spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words and he who searches hearts knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Sure, both the Son and the Spirit are interceding. Uh, reference number four, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7. Listen to this. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. 
and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And the last biblical reference before we close this off is 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. It reads as follows. 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 to 15, it reads, And this is the confidence that we have toward Him. And this is the confidence we have toward Him. A. And this is the confidence that we have toward Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, in whatever we ask, we know that we have the... Re we ha yeah? And we know that we have the request that we have asked of Him. Sure. This is just the confidence that God answers prayers. This is the confidence that uh, God hears our prayers. And this is the confidence that says that we should entrust all our anxieties, all our concerns to God in prayer.